Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Today, I saw the devil. When most people hear the word devil, they think of a red man with horns and a stake. Well, in this case, it was a man in complete human form. I convinced myself I didn't need new clothes, but I was aching to get out of the house. I decided to head to a local thrift shop to kill some time before dinner. I tried on a few outfits here and there, gawked at mannequins and eavesdropped on a few fellow shoppers reality TV show worthy drama. As I was finishing up my shopping, I noticed that my body and mind felt different. I had chills up and down my body, covering every inch. I got nauseous, but tried to ignore the feeling. My mind was spinning. I felt confused and disoriented. For a few moments, I didn't even know where I was or why I was there. It startled me a bit, but I didn't want to stress it. Since I didn't feel well, I told myself it was time to head home. I left the store without buying a single thing, and that's harder than it sounds for a girl like me in a thrift shop, and I walked out the door into the parking lot to find my car. I was about halfway to my destination when a truck pulled up next to me and stopped. I thought it was odd, but I didn't think much of it. All of a sudden, the sky got dark. Everything was blurry. The truck's engine turned off. A man in his late forties climbed out of his pickup and headed toward the truck bed. I felt extremely uneasy and knew something wasn't right, but I continued to make my way to the place I had parked. Just then, I heard a voice in my head. It wasn't a human voice, nor did I hear actual words. It was more of a feeling, telling me to run. I looked back at the man once more. This time we made eye contact. Never before have I feared for my life the way I did in that very moment when our eyes met. His eyes were black. Black as night without a moon. He grinned the most evil grin, showing off his yellow and rotten teeth. He began to walk toward me, and I muttered a few unrepeatable words, still unable to take my eyes off of him. I kept feeling like it was a dream, a nightmare. I wanted so badly to wake up from this traumatizing moment, but I couldn't. The man had something in his hands as he continued in my direction. I broke eye contact caught what I could of my breath and made a run for it. Keys in hand, I jumped in my front seat, slammed and locked the door, and took off for home. Once I felt I was a safe distance from what had just occurred, I pulled over. I was shaking uncontrollably, dizzy, unable to breathe, nauseated, scared, in awe. I could not comprehend what I had seen. My mind just wouldn't let me. As I began to catch my breath and calm myself as much as I could, the sky started to become light again. The world around me was no longer black or fuzzy, but finally in focus. Then it hit me. I realized what I had seen, and it was something I had never expected to see in my lifetime. God had shown me a glimpse of the devil. And let me tell you, it's not something to ever want or hope to see. When the evil feeling consumed me in that parking lot, I felt as though I was going to be harmed, that my life was in danger, that I would be taken or hurt. The man did not speak a word, nor make a sound, and although I had finally made it home physically safe and sound in what felt like a drive that lasted forever, my mind will never forget what I saw on October 15, 2015. Today, I saw the devil. The year was 1999. I don't remember the month, but it was the beginning of cold, stormy weather. I was living with my parents in Tranquility, California at the time. I was partying with some friends in the town of San Joaquin, which is eight miles away from Tranquility. We were having a good time and as the party went on past midnight, I got into a fight with a guy that was drunk and causing trouble. 
I had too much to drink as well and after they broke us up I decided it was time for me to go home. I had come to the party with a friend of mine. We came in his car and when I went looking for him I was told he took off earlier with someone and didn't tell anyone where he was going or when he was coming back. Well, I didn't want to stick around anymore, so I started getting ready to walk home using the main highway that connected the two towns. Others tried to persuade me to stay and wait for my friend, but in my state, my mind was made up. I remember it was cold and windy that night, and it wasn't the best decision for me to walk the eight miles home alone, but I figured I would hitchhike and hopefully someone would give me a ride. I just wanted to get home and go to sleep. So I said my goodbyes and started walking. I was around one third of the way when I realized I made a mistake. I should have stayed and waited for my lame friend. That's when I saw some headlights coming toward me in the same direction I was walking. I stuck out my thumb and the car drove past me and kept going. Then another car came down the road and did the same thing. It was beginning to get very cold and there were some lightning flashes. I was getting ready to turn around and go back when I saw another car coming down the road, so I stuck out my thumb and it too drove past me. But as soon as it did, the brake lights came on and it pulled over. I started running up to the car, relieved I was finally going to get a ride and get out of the cold. As I approached the car, the driver's door opened and the driver got out. There was something totally wrong with the way he exited the vehicle. I mean... His body movements were sort of stiff and awkward. When I got closer, I started to say something when suddenly a bright lightning bolt flashed across the sky. It lit everything up and I got a good glimpse of the driver. He looked like one of those mannequins you see in those big department stores. A blank facial expression with a slight smile and the way it was walking. Man, I became incredibly frightened. Then the passenger door opened and another occupant stepped out in the same awful manner. I could tell by its silhouette against the headlights shining down the road that it was female, and another lightning bolt flashed revealing she too was a dummy. I think I screamed, then I ran into the cornfield that was next to the road. The corn was almost six feet tall and had recently been irrigated because I was running in mud that was up to my ankles. I just kept going, not stopping. It was tiring running through the mud and just for a few minutes I did stop to catch my breath. In that moment I could hear somewhere behind me the corn stalks being rustled. I was beginning to feel lightheaded and dizzy, like I was going to pass out. Then I heard car doors slamming shut and the sound of the car driving away. I didn't go back to the highway, no way, I was too scared. I kept plodding through the cornfield until I came out the other side. That's when I sort of collapsed. I was shaking all over. I stayed there for at least an hour before I headed back to San Joaquin. To this day when I think back, it could have been someone playing a joke just to scare people. I don't know. They looked real to me and it was like a nightmare. I am still not quite sure if what I'm about to tell you actually happened or not. It could have been a really bad nightmare. At least that's what I've been trying to tell myself for years now. Has anyone ever heard of the pig lady? Well, when I heard of her, I was around 12 years old in 2005. I had stayed over at a friend's house and we stayed up all night telling each other scary stories. Then one girl told us about the pig lady. She said that it's someone who has a woman's body with the face of a pig. You have to say her name three times and she would appear and chase you. There was no way that I believed that. Then she said it actually happened to her and some old friends of hers before. She told me about how the pig lady had chased them through the woods. I didn't believe a word that she was saying, but I played along anyway. After a moment, she decided to say her name three times. Pig lady. Pig lady. Pig lady. Nothing happened. 
I decided that it was just an old scare myth that wasn't the least bit true. After the stories were over and we went to sleep, it was thundering and lightning outside. Since the bed was right under the window and we had no curtains up, everyone made me sleep on the side of the bed directly under the window. Both of my friends had went to sleep before me and I had stayed awake listening to the rain. Then, all of a sudden, there was a bolt of lightning and I could have sworn in that split second that I had saw someone standing at that window, but as soon as I blinked my eyes, they were gone. I kept telling myself that I was just imagining things and that I had to fall asleep and in the morning everything would be fine. When I woke the next morning, my two friends decided they wanted to walk to the store. So I got up, took a bath, got dressed and was ready to go. As we walked, again we started talking about the pig lady and again one of my friends said her name three times. Then, we all yelled at her at the top of our lungs three times. The next thing we knew, we heard footsteps behind us. On the specific road we were on, there was nothing but trees around us. My friend's house was the only house on that road and the nearest neighbors were close to the store almost another mile away. All of us were afraid to look behind us, but every time we stopped walking, the footsteps stopped as well. Um, do you all hear that too? One of the girls asked me. Hear what? I asked, being in denial. Before anyone could respond, I decided to turn my head for just a second to see exactly what was going on, and immediately, I wished I didn't. The sight I saw was the worst thing I had ever seen in my life. It was a woman dressed in a blue jumpsuit with a baseball cap on. As soon as I looked behind me, she lifted her head, and I saw the face of a pig. I took off running and screaming without looking back. I knew that my friends were somewhere behind or beside me because I could hear their screams over my own. When we reached the store ten minutes later, I took a chance and looked behind me again, but I saw nothing. I didn't stop running until I got inside the store though, and I didn't see a trace of anything but me and my friends. We looked at each other, all out of breath and not sure if what just happened actually happened. We called the girl's mom and asked her to pick us up because we saw a strange guy watching us. To this day, we swore that it never actually happened. We swore it was just our own imagination. But how could we all have imagined the same thing? And how did that person just up and disappear? These are the questions that we have avoided throughout the years and will continue to avoid. In the early 1970s, my older cousin and his family lived six miles south, two miles east of St. Francis, South Dakota, in an area known as Bull Creek, named for bulls that were pastured in that area. My cousin and several other relatives had a drinking party on a Friday evening. As the party went on, the beer was getting low so he and his son were elected to make a run to get more in the bordering town of Kilgore, Nebraska, ten miles south of Bull Creek. He got to the main road and turned south. About two miles into the trip, he saw a man and woman walking. My cousin didn't give it a thought as he stopped the car and poked his head out and said in Lakota, Get in, we'll give you a ride. To his surprise, there were no walkers. They had simply vanished. He said goosebumps ran up and down his body, but he threw the car into drive and continued on. About another two miles down the road, the same two walkers were on the road south. Again, my cousin stopped to offer a ride, but again, the walkers disappeared. My cousin zoomed into Kilgore and bought the beer, opened a can and poured out the contents and drove home. No more incidences on the way home. When he got back to the party and told what had happened, the party came to an almost dead stop as they all looked at each other, scared. One had the presence of mind to light a sage even while drinking, after that, all went home. Since that time, 
A few persons have related that they too saw the hitchhikers and offered them a ride, but they too disappeared. However, by word of mouth, no one is to walk that road after dark, drunk or sober, because of the walkers. This was related to me in 1997 when the wife of my cousin talked about it. Though terrifying, it hasn't slowed down the traffic to Kilgore to buy booze. This event took place in July 1991 in the Fraser Valley of British Columbia, Canada. My husband and I bought a small home in the country. It was a quiet, peaceful area with dairy farms and rolling hills. We had lived there a few weeks when one night we were awoken by the sounds of what seemed to be two women in a heated argument. We both got up, looked around both in the house and outside, but everything was still and quiet. We thought it strange because the neighbor's dog would have barked if anyone was around, and the motion detector lights would have come on if anyone had been around. A few nights later, the same thing happened. I happened to be in the yard the next day when the lady from the next house over was walking by, so I asked if she had heard the argument during the night. She said she hadn't heard anything. It was quiet for a few days. Then one morning at around 7 a.m., I woke up to the smell of coffee and fresh bread, so I got up and went into the kitchen. Nothing. This happened almost every morning after that. Our grandkids came to visit and played in the yard often. When they went home, we could hear a small child cry. We would look around, but of course there would be no one around. This happened after my grandkids went home almost every time. It was like this little ghost missed them. Once I even heard the voice of a little girl say, Grandma. I read some books on ghosts which said not to be afraid and speak out to the ghost, so I did. I told the child to keep asking for her grandma to come and help. Shortly after, it stopped. I would guess her grandma came for her. It was kind of sad, but I hope I did the right thing by talking to her. The other things continued all the time we lived there. We had a new roof put on the house and the roofer said there had been a fire in the house. There were burn marks over the kitchen area. We figured this is what had happened. We sold the house and the new owners tore the house down and built a new one. So I never did find out about our former home and the history behind it. I moved into my home in January of 1991. On the first night, I was awoken by a low, wavering voice calling for John. I sat up in bed and looked around my room. Then I went to the window to see if someone was outside. It was a cold winter night and no one was around. I went back to bed only to hear the same voice calling for John. I sat up in my bed and told the voice to get out and that this was my house. The voice stopped. Several months later, after I got to know my neighbor, I asked her who had lived in my home and told her about my story. She informed me that a family had lived there for about 20 years and they had a son named John. She also said the woman had died and the house was sold. John would be in his late 50s now and he was an alcoholic. My 8-year-old granddaughter Jenny shared my home with me Jenny would come into my room at night and tell me she woke up and knew the ghost was standing beside her bed. Also, things would disappear only to then reappear. This went on for a year or so. Then one morning, as I was getting ready for work, I heard Jenny upstairs. She was in my bed as the ghost had woken her up during the night. I ran upstairs to find a terrified child in my bed. She said she saw the ghost standing beside her and described a small woman with dark hair. She also said the ghost touched her on the leg and her whole body was tingling. Several years later, my son and two-year-old grandson came to live with me. 
and my son started missing objects, like scissors, etc., only to have them mysteriously reappear. Then he began to wake up at night feeling the ghost standing and watching him. She was back. I feel her presence many nights as I sit in the living room by myself. I think we have learned to live with each other now. These experiences I'm writing about happened to me twice, many years apart. The first event was back around 1981 when I was a teenager, maybe 16 years old. I was at my home in Burnaby, British Columbia, Canada. I was alone outside on the back deck reading a book and fully engrossed in it. Slowly, I started to become aware of a strange noise that seemed to be getting closer. It sounded somewhat like an animal crying, but also sort of human, like a little child. Kind of a crying, whimpering sound, but not a sound I could identify. I finally put down my book and started looking over the deck into the yard to find the source of this strange sound. The weird thing is is that the sound became louder and closer sounding, but nothing appeared to be making the sound. It sounded as though whatever was making the noise was only a few feet away, but nothing was there. I started to get a bit spooked at this point, got my dog, and went down into the yard to investigate. When I got to the front yard, the noise stopped. I started looking around, but there was nothing to be seen, at least by me. However, my dog certainly seemed to see something in the flower bed next to the house, she started barking and growling with her hackles raised, but nothing was visible to me. I even pushed all the plants around, thinking there must have been a small animal hiding there. Nothing. I thought this was really unusual and could find no explanation for it, but since it stopped, I sort of forgot about it. Everything seemed to be back to normal until later that night. I was watching TV in the living room with my mom and sister when we heard the strangest noise at the window. It sounded as if though someone had taken a wet hand and slowly ran it down the glass, making a squeaking type of noise. It scared the hell out of me. My mom and sister were spooked as well. None of us wanted to look outside to see what made the sound. Finally, we made my dad look outside and nothing was there. The noise was blamed on kids playing a prank on us, even though that had never happened before or since. Fast forward to 1997. I'm now living in a different house in Surrey, British Columbia, with my husband and 10-month-old son. We had been in the house for about four months. I, my son, and the cat were the only ones in the house at the time. My son was in the living room with baby gates stopping him from crawling into the other rooms. I went into the kitchen to do something at the sink when I started to hear this weird crying sound again. My first thought was that something was wrong with my son, as that was not his normal cry at all. I went to look and saw that he wasn't making any sound at all. The noise was not coming from him. The sound was getting louder as I stood at the top of the stairs. The noise seemed to be traveling from the ground level and up the stairs. I could hear the sound as it passed by me, went through the kitchen and to the back door and stopped. It reminded me of the sound I heard back in 1981. Another strange thing is that even after the sound stopped, my cat was freaked out about that kitchen door for the next few days. He was scared to go through it, even though he had been using it since we had moved in. A weird little coincidence I would like to mention is that a similar thing happened many years earlier to my grandparents back before they were married around 1932. They had a similar experience in my great-grandparents house which was located on a farm near Winnipeg, Manitoba. My grandparents were sitting at the kitchen table one evening when a crying sound started moving around the table. They followed the sound outside to a barn where it eventually stopped. No explanation could be found. It seems to me that all these events are related. Perhaps my family is haunted by a crying ghost. 
I wonder if anyone else has had a similar experience or has any explanation for it. I was about 14 and my best friend Missy was about 17. We lived in a very small town in northern Michigan. I stayed overnight at her house on the weekends often. We would usually play cards, watch TV, or go for walks around the small lake that was the central part of our small town. I heard her tell a story to her parents, other friends, and she would tell it to me often too. I heard the babies crying again last night, she would say. She described hearing babies cry outside her bedroom in the hallway, always at night. Her bedroom was the only room on the second floor. To get there, we would go up the stairs, turn to the right, and walk down a hall parallel to the staircase to get to her room at the end of the hall. I heard her tell this story many times, and I did not disbelieve her. I just listened and thought, hmm, that's weird I guess. Missy and I were not the type of people to gossip or make up things, and I couldn't see her making up this story to get attention or anything, but I would usually just dismiss it and we'd go on about our day. Until one night when I heard them for myself. I slept on a pile of blankets and pillows, a blanket nest, at the end of her bed. We just turned out the light and said goodnight to each other. About a minute later, I began to hear a baby crying. I said, Missy, I hear them. She said, Don't worry. It will stop soon. So I didn't worry. I just listened. The sound went from one baby crying to maybe three. Then it sounded like it went back down to one baby again, then back to multiple babies crying. It went on like this for maybe four or five minutes. It was quite a while, and I remember thinking to myself in somewhat of an annoyance, when will this stop? because it seemed like it had been lasting for quite a while. When it finally ended, I think I said something like, I don't hear them anymore, and we went back to sleep. Ever since then, I believe in ghosts, not only because I actually heard them myself, but because we both heard them at the same time, and because I had heard of her tell the story so many times before. We never did learn the backstory of where these babies came from, or what their history was. It was very strange, to say the least. My house isn't very old, but a lot of strange things have happened to me there. I've always enjoyed ghost stories and such, so I guess I've let them in. The first time it happened was when I was about six. I'm 14 now. I went out to the living room and set down my stuffed toy on its side. I turned back around and noticed it was now on all fours. It was a stuffed Webkin's dog. At the time I didn't think much of it. The next thing happened last year. My room in my house is right above the workshop that a man before us had built when he built the basement. When I sit in my room through the vent system I can hear voices in the basement even when there is no one down there or any televisions or radios on. It's usually a man and a woman talking, and the man seems to be angry, swearing and yelling and such, while the woman cries and he throws things around. This year, however, it got worse. Lately I've seen a woman in a long white dress pass through my living room in the morning, and when I went to shower one morning, I heard someone walking around, and then laughing from a woman, even though I was home alone. I've also had a few problems only in my room. One morning as I'm waking up from a dream about demon-like things attacking me, I felt a cold chill run up my spine and begin to make me shake uncontrollably. I couldn't move or scream, and I was afraid to open my eyes. Then I heard a whisper in my ear saying, Thank you for the things you're going to remember in your head. Lastly, one night a few weeks ago, as I lay in my bed, I looked to my wall and saw a shadow of a person sitting. It seemed he had a cloak or something on, and I, 
assuming it was a shadow or something in my room, got up and moved things on and around my bed to dispel the shadow, but it didn't move. Later that night, when it was still there, I put my foot down where it would be and felt an insane sensation of cold. It has been there every night since. This happened on July 21st, 2011. I was on my way home after spending the whole day in the town of Alice, Texas. I'm a construction worker and I was looking at some possible jobs. I went to three homes that day. I talked to the owners to see what they wanted done and gave them an estimate. It was 6 in the evening when I started to head back to Beeville, but before I got on the main highway I stopped at a restaurant and had some dinner along with a couple of beers. It was almost 8 when I started down the highway. It was beginning to get dark and as I drove I went over the job numbers in my mind. One of them was very promising with the potential of making a good profit. I called my partner on my phone and discussed the details of the job with him. I told him we'd get together tomorrow and hung up. I was halfway to Beeville when I noticed up ahead some moving white lights that were on the left side of the road. The area I was in gets very dark at night and those dancing lights were the only thing visible against the black background and there was no traffic on the road besides myself. As I got closer, the lights started changing colors. They went from white to green, blue and then red. When I was adjacent to the lights, I slowed down to get a better look. Then I stopped. I thought maybe it was another vehicle or something. The lights were bright and would move up and down, then move in a circular motion. I would say the lights were about a quarter mile away, but it was hard to judge the distance in the dark. I started thinking about the stories and reports I've read about people who have seen UFOs, aliens, and strange lights in the sky, all that stuff, and began to conclude I might be having my own encounter. I turned off the engine leaving my headlights on and rolled down my window in an effort to hear any sound coming from the lights. I heard nothing. It was kind of spooky. The lights were zigzagging, going up and down, when suddenly they grouped together and became motionless, like they were aware of me. Slowly, they started to get brighter and I realized they were coming toward me. I decided I'd had enough and started my truck, but as soon as I did, my engine died. I tried starting it again, but it wouldn't start properly. The engine was sluggish. I turned off the lights, thinking maybe that would help. Meanwhile, the lights turned into a gold color and were still getting brighter. I tried again to start the engine, and this time it did. Then a startling thing happened. When I turned my headlights on, their beams started to bend toward the approaching lights. I kid you not, I've never seen the likes of that before, is that even possible? I put it into drive and got the hell out of there. The beam straightened out as I punched it. I kept looking back in my mirror at the lights and when they came in line with the highway I saw the same effect of them getting brighter which meant they were following me. Now I was scared, I was thinking, what are they, are they some kind of aircraft or what? My speed was up to 80 miles per hour and I was beginning to sweat like a dog. I looked in my mirror again and now there were only one light, but that was a false impression because the lights were traveling in a single file formation. They caught up and passed over me, one after the other lighting up the interior of my truck in a golden hue. The lights went on down the highway ahead of me reflecting their brightness off of the ground. I slowed down and let them have the road. As I did, the lights made a left turn in that same single file formation and headed toward the east. Again my headlight beams started to bend in their direction. It was simply amazing. The strange lights continued on their easterly path until they were obscured by my view by, I imagine some hills. All this time my headlight beams would start to bend then straighten out then start to bend again. Incredible. I didn't see the golden lights anymore for the remainder of my trip. 
I was very shaken up by the whole experience, and I was so relieved when I finally reached home. 